I wish to preface this video by clarifying that I'm not here to bash one series or the other, but instead talk about something that I feel needs to be addressed with the series. Thank you. In 2005, I started watching Doctor Who when it premiered. My parents were fans of the old series, so I was curious about it. There was basically no way to watch the old series back then, and it was advertised as a starting point for new fans. I enjoyed it well enough, but we got rid of Satellite a few years later, so I had no way of continuing to watch. I moved on. A few years later, we got Netflix in the house. With that, Doctor Who came back, and I started to watch again. This led to a growing problem, though. I've always been a completist, and the first 26 seasons were still unavailable to me. Now, the impact that YouTube had on the internet and what we could watch was huge. Suddenly, shows like old series Doctor Who finally had a place online where they could be accessed and watched, something even prominent streaming services like Netflix failed to accommodate. I discovered Daily Motion's massive collection of titles, like many other fans before me curious about the first 26 seasons of the show. After cherry-picking different stories and checking various Doctors out, I felt ready to do something that I'd always wanted to do and take on the entire old series. It was daunting, but I was hungry. Season upon season of murderous cyborgs, bug-eyed monsters, rickety spaceships, all in service of some incredible classic sci-fi scripts. It was the perfect fit for me because it played like a 26 season B-movie, and I grew up on a steady diet of low-budget sci-fi and horror. As my curiosity of the old series grew, I started learning about the lengths old series fans were willing to go just to experience these stories. Like reading novelizations and trading cassette tapes they recorded during airings because home media didn't exist yet, and then buying each individual story on VHS and DVD as they were gradually released for the masses. Box sets just weren't a thing. I made a startling discovery when I went back to the revival after finishing the old series, though. They weren't the same show at all. The format was different. The tone was different. The show seemed embarrassed by the series it claimed to be a continuation of, and refused to take itself seriously. Romance between the Doctor and his companions had become a prominent subplot of the show, which the old series never did, effectively turning the series into a melodramatic young adult soap opera. The writing had become watered down to appeal to a demographic of people that don't normally watch this kind of stuff in their own words. It just wasn't the same quality as the old series. A true continuation would actively work towards getting viewers to watch the previous seasons, because they're supposed to be the same series after all. The revival fails to do so, acting like a self-contained series aside from the occasional easter egg or throwaway reference. The script seemed to be written by people who have been hired to write science fiction as opposed to being enthusiasts of the genre themselves, leading to very uninspired premises with very little imagination. Ironically, a potent remedy of this would be to get them to watch the old series. The revival even went out of its way to release its seasons under a new numbering system which makes no sense if you're supposedly continuing the same series. Overall, it just seemed obvious that the people behind the revival had no interest in making a legitimate continuation of the same series from 1963 to 1989, but to make a reboot masquerading as a continuation, commonly known as a soft reboot. Because of the revival's insistence on being a continuation, however, it qualifies as something much, much simpler. It's a bad sequel. Revival-era Doctor Who is a product of a very unfortunate and uncomfortable era of television, where studios temporarily lost faith in the marketability of science fiction shows. This led to the delusion of scripts. They were aiming to make science fiction for the rest of us. Shows like Stranger Things and Rick and Morty have proven multiple times over that people can get into outlandish and smarter shows. But networks like BBC continue to stay the course in spite of fans abandoning these shows by the millions over the years. CBS is in a similar boat with the controversial line of Star Trek shows produced by Alex Kurtzman for their streaming service. There's no coincidence that both are dealing with turbulence and resistance from fans and audiences alike. Now, I have no objections to reboots or new interpretations of beloved franchises. Everyone from Batman to Godzilla has been reimagined countless times, and we've gotten some pretty amazing shows and films as a result of it. The problem is, when you make something that claims to be a continuation of something, 
Make no effort to be a faithful continuation of something, and cultivate a fanbase that's embarrassed by the thing it's a continuation of. You're being deceptive, and you're causing unwanted friction in a passionate fanbase that's been around for decades. Further confusing is the distance placed on social media sites like Facebook. If this is indeed the same series, then why do most posts exclusively focus on the revival? As of 2017, a majority of the old series is available on BritBox, a streaming service. To this day, Revival fans are shocked when they discover this, because no mentions are made of this on social media posts unless other fans tell them about it. The biggest tragedy is the fact that it has never been easier, cheaper, or legal to see the old series the way you can now, with affordable streaming services like BritBox offering everything in one convenient location. And while old series fans practically moved mountains to catch a glimpse of these old stories, these self-proclaimed world's biggest fans make a hundred excuses for why they can't watch the same show the revival claims to be a continuation of. If you like a show, why aren't you watching it then? Until next time.